Welcome back into One Soccer today. Andy Gareth, Ollie, still with you. Pleased to be joined by Christian Jack once again here on One Soccer today, and who will also be joining us match day live when we bring you the World Cup qualifiers. Canada taking on Aruba and Suriname. And also, KJ, it's a pleasure to be reading some of your articles. You wrote a great piece. Uh, head on over to news.onesoccer.ca if you missed it. Here's an excerpt from that article. You wrote four games, 11 days. The pressure is on, but that is nothing more than a shadow of opportunity. This this team missed that in 2019. There will not be another chance like this. What a privilege. KJ, what did you mean by there will not be another chance like this? Well, there is really nothing better in an international football than the grind of qualifying for a World Cup. There's nothing more powerful than playing in a World Cup. And, you know, that journey is something that these Canadian teams have been preparing for for a long time. These young men, you know, their reputations are soaring around the world of the club game. Why? Because they continue to overcome success, sorry, overachieve and get success against really stiff opposition. You think about what they've accomplished in the club game, really going against the best in the world to do that. They want to do that now and the best in the world, the best that they can offer in this region. And if they can't do that and accomplish that and get the complete fulfillment out of this program unless they go head to head against the likes of Mexico, United States, Honduras, Panama, others. And, and what are they going to do that? Well, that's this, this World Cup qualifying. You know, the best South America, the best South America is the best World Cup qualifying there is because of how tedious it is and the opportunity to play 14 games during the stretch of what would be five international windows, Ollie, I think is what they've been craving for some time. They will not get that opportunity by, as hosts in four years' time. So you're looking at another eight, nine years to really have this opportunity to qualify in a competitive environment for this group of players. That They deserve it. They've worked hard for it. Now they have to take it. Yeah, you said it right there. 14 games is, is a real opportunity to test yourself against the best that CONCACAF has to offer. And, and I think those games would just be so important for this program for multiple reasons, right? You know, there's the on-field development of a team and the way these players at the level they're playing at for their clubs, you know, need bigger tests than they've been getting over the past couple of years and they need them on a regular basis to get that kind of game-to-game -game action and reaction and, you, you know, those learning moments as you go through uh, a series of games. And then you look at the off-field side of it as well and, and the, you know, the excitement that this would generate, having Mexico, United States, teams like that with the World Cup on the line, um, that generates buzz, it generates attention, it, it generates investment in the program as well. And, and then that's something that could filter all the way through the, the levels in Canadian soccer, through the Canadian Premier League, through the grassroots of the sport and things like that. So I, I really don't think you can overstate how important and how valuable it would be to, to have that final round of World Cup qualifying ahead of us. So that's big picture analysis, but let's get to the nitty gritty here. KJ, do you have any concerns? Well, I think you always have concerns as a follower of Canadian soccer. Nothing ever goes <laughs> completely you know, smoothly as it is. And I think we should be expecting that. I think on the field, tactically, when you draw it up, I think the biggest weakness, everybody knows, it, is centre-back. I think when you look at defensively, um, you know, they, they can only do what they can do with what they've got, right? So I think when you look at the programme and everyone will talk about how exciting they are going forward and the midfield is a real area of strength. Fullback now, uh, particularly with Alistair Johnston, Richie Larea, and even Buchanan, who can play there. Uh, is becoming an area of strength. They've got depth in goal. Centre-back's the weakness. They know that. The players know that. The programme know that. The coaching staff know that. And I think you know, it could be a key ingredient of how can you maximise those players? How can you get them to get more out of themselves? Because you can do that in sports. Um, but the concern is they haven't played a lot. You know, even the most experienced players of the bunch, you know, you, you, you think about Daniil Henry hasn't played much in obviously in 2021 because he's been injured. You know, I like the young players, Sterling and Kennedy, but they're playing in second division. They haven't played a ton of games either. Can he trust them together? So, Gareth, I think, un you know, unquestionably, that is the area of concern and maybe an area for them to challenge themselves to get better at. It's center back, but I'm going to kind of look at things in a little bit of a different way. We know in international competition, timing is everything. And one thing that this Canadian team hasn't had is a lot of games or a lot of time together. Just mm. through COVID, other nations have been playing. Perhaps it brings up those smaller nations, allows them to play a little bit more pragmatic against this Canadian team. So I don't love the timing because I don't think that we're going to be seeing the best version of themselves. And on top of that, the schedule. It's lined up against Canada. Suriname has an extra day off between games. And then if Canada does go on to the next round, they'll have to travel to the first leg, potentially to Haiti, who will be staying at home waiting for Canada. Then you travel back. The Canadian team has to travel twice. Haiti would only have to travel once. And you're going to a neutral venue. You're not even playing in your own country. So the circumstances are certainly not ideal. I'm not making excuses, but this is just the reality of a very difficult two weeks that are coming Canada's way. 
You never want to take any opponent lightly, but KG, as you can imagine, we've been focusing a lot on Suriname more so than Aruba. But I guess I have to ask you, when they take on Suriname, do you think that's a team that's been overhyped or underplayed? Well, I guess it depends if you're a fan of Gareth Wheeler or Oliver Platt, because you can take one or the other. <laughs> this is true. I'm, 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 I'm hearing it. I'm, I'm hearing that you guys are international stars right now, and you know Ollie's got, Ollie's on the dartboards in Suriname. So, uh, yeah. yeah. But I, you know, I would go as far as to say I agree with a little bit of both of them. But I think the biggest competition that Canada have in that game is themselves. You know, ultimately Suriname are they a team that can beat Canada? Yes. Should they beat Canada? No. Are they a team that can lead Canada? Yes. Canada haven't had a great record. I've very much experience from coming from behind. We know going into that game, most likely Canada will only need a draw. Will that mean that they're a little bit more conservative and not showing themselves? I think all of those ingredients with so much on the line, what's to come, is something that Canada, I think, can overcome. But ultimately, I think that might be the biggest test, more than so than the opponent themselves. Although, you know, I'll go to the Suriname expert himself, Mr. Platt, who can, can explain a little bit more about them, because I know this is going to be... <laughs> A big, big moment for that man's career. And I'm not talking about players. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave the uh, my popularity in Suriname to one side. I think I've done myself enough damage there by now. I, I think with this with this team, that it will be a challenge for sure. And, and the challenge is, I think, that Suriname, with the new recruits they've got, they can put out a starting 11 and probably a few subs as well where there is no real weakness, right? There is a player in every position playing at a good level in Europe, if not maybe uh, the same level as, as some of the Canadians. Um, are playing at. So that's the challenge. I, I, I just think that when you look at the, maybe the lack of top end talent compared to Canada and you also look at the lack of familiarity with this team. Yes, Canada haven't had a lot of games together lately, but Suriname, they could, they could have, you know, one or two players potentially in their starting lineup um, who became Suriname players earlier than the, the March international window, right? So they're a brand new team. Um, and with that being the case, with Canada only needing a draw to get through here, I just struggle to, to really see this being as, as much of a problem as, as maybe some have made out. But maybe I'll be proven wrong and uh, the, the Suriname fans on YouTube can, can celebrate afterwards. Well, we will have our answer after June 8th, that's for sure. And KJ, in those March World Cup qualifiers, we did not see... Scott Arfield. We discussed him in our post-game match as well on, you know, whether or not it was the right thing or wrong thing to do to uh, not join the team. And now the question is, has he played his final match for Canada? Well, I'll never say never, but I think probably he has. You know, I'm not a betting man, but I'd probably put bet on it if, if I was. But, you know, I, I heard a year ago it was done. You know, now, you know, I understand that he's had a big career with Rangers. He's been absolutely fantastic, by the way, for Steven Gerrard and their campaign to get to the Europa League and obviously smash all the records domestically. Uh, I won't say never because I think if they make the World Cup, and it's a big if, but at 34, if you need a real stability and leadership, but by that point, we might still have 26 expanded roster for international tournaments, then I think the invite would come out to him and I think he would accept. But I think at this point, it is clear from you know everything we, 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 that we're reading from John Herdman's quotes and what we're hearing from him, everything that Scott Arfield isn't saying, um, that it isn't a priority for him right now. And I, and I think that it's probably unlikely that we'll see him play for Canada again, Gareth. I I think we're asking the wrong question here. Arfield's a good player, he's a good guy, but what kind of role is going to be there for him when he makes his decision if he wants to come back into this team? Because when a player turns down a call, and it might be for admirable reasons, family, rest, looking ahead, doing a, a service for your club team, you're still giving up your chance and giving it to someone else. We don't only have World Cup qualifiers, we have the Gold Cup this summer. And there's plenty of young players coming through who are committed, who are showing up. We have a group of 11 players that are just showing up basically to fill out the numbers and play in scrimmage games to help Canada prepare. So will this program just open the doors wide open, say, come on back, here's your starting role in the team. Players have emerged. Watherspoons, Eustachios, other players in that position maybe are more you know, committed and more of a fit for where Canada is and where they're going right now. So instead of saying, well, has he played his last game? Is the player going to come back? Perhaps we should be asking the, player, what, the, the question, what are the conditions that Canada can welcome a player who hasn't answered the call and welcome him back into the program? Well, it definitely feels like a passing of the torch in some way with no Scott Arfield. And we know Noah Tiba, but that's because of injury. So for these next two World Cup qualifiers, missing that veteran presence. KJ, it was a pleasure having you on. 